Well, good morning, my gardening friends. Thank you for tuning into this video. So, it is going to be a Memorial Day garden walk. So, before we get into the gardening and the plants, I just want to take a moment to um, really honor and salute all the men and women who have sacrificed so much for our country and our freedoms today. Um, that's, that's why we celebrate today. For the true heroes of our nation. So we can be able to get out and garden all day if we want to. So anyway, I really want to take a moment for Memorial Day and just thank all the heroes for fighting for this great nation. Primrose is really holding its bloom. It's been in bloom for several weeks now. I love how that really brightens up the gardens. So I have been busy this three day weekend in the yard. As you can see, our blue bottle path here has been cleaned up a little bit and reshaped. I don't know if you guys can see that black line there with the spray paint, but that kind of shows where I want the pathway to go. So let's just take a walk. Hopefully all of you have been able to get out this weekend in your gardens. So, the back of this island bed, whatever you want to call it, has been extended, obviously. You can kind of see the shape more there. And then I'll show you in a minute, but um, over there, I don't know if you can see through the fence, but right there is um, where I planted a barberry that I transplanted from the front landscape. So you're probably wondering what happened to the sage that was planted there. Well, it got divided and popped in here. You know, sporadically. So next year I will have a nice little pops of purple in the back of this garden. Again, this is extended, so I have plenty of room to fill it full of stuff. So that was a chore yesterday. So the sage has calmed down. I've, not this one. I have yet to cut this back. But the rest of the sage has been cut back. This canthus grass, my favorite grass, looks gorgeous. Here we have the, um, I think it's something midnight, uh, hibiscus. That'll get the big burgundy red blooms on it. Baptisia is done flowering. I really wish I could get more flowers on it. Maybe next year. I'm just glad it did anything though this year. So let's walk the other side. I'll walk this way to get my shadow out of there. In the back here we have a hollyhock, and this is the 
the deep purple, almost black hollyhock. Spider wart still looking good. I love it with the red of this rose. That blue and red together. You guys can see that rose. This is, I don't know what kind of rose this is, unfortunately. But it, it is probably my favorite red rose. Hopefully the bright sun isn't washing all this out and you guys can see it. Um, so I did find another chunk of the the regular, the dark green leaf um, spider wart that was amongst the Siberian irises. So I stuck that over here. Lots of transplanting and weeding and cleaning up this weekend. running into the bottles here I've got uh, morning glories coming up in here All right I don't want to bore you with too much that's not showy right now um, a couple of new plants. This is, I don't know if I showed you in the last video. This is the uh, black and blue salvia. Which uh, I really love and I've been wanting it for a while. So my grandma purchased her some and me some. Daylilies will be here blooming shortly for June. Coneflower. I think that one's white coneflower. And of course in here too we have several clumps of the purple gladius that we put in this spring. Tiger lily in there smoke bush I love that purple foliage and this plant let's see if you can see that right here this is the swamp milkweed that we put in last year. We put in a couple pieces of that. Absolutely gorgeous when it's in flower. And then this is what the caterpillars will um, eat and lay their eggs on. So you might recall in a video last year all the caterpillars that were on this plant this is the swamp milkweed. Again, uh, transplanted lamb's ear. I believe this is that blue wildflower that I had in here last year that went completely crazy. And I love the blue color, but boy do, do the um, seed heads get all over everything. They're kind of spiky and they cling to your clothes and the dogs. But I love that blue color anytime I can get blue in the garden. It will stay.
purple salvia. Gorgeous clump of lamb's ear. Larkspur. This is either Larkspur or it's Delphiniums. I can't remember. I get confused on those two. But as you can see, it's a very uh, light blue and white. I almost pulled this out because I thought it was a weed. But because the foliage kind of looks like a weed. But I love it. And I want this to go everywhere if it can. Let me get a close up. Again, I hope the sun's not fading this out too much. More primrose in this garden. We've got some growth on our Bathsheba rose. And I've actually got a few buds on the other one, so that's exciting. Columbine still going. I'll let that go to C2. I'll show you the other Bathsheba climbing rose that we purchased this year. And these were bare root roses. And we've got a bud. So that's exciting. I apologize if I sound nasally. <laughs> Sorry for the bumpiness. Hydrangea. So this is a Macrophilia Hydrangea and I'm just super excited about it. So happy that it's got blooms on it this year. This is the third third year that it's been here. This was actually dug up from my grandma's house and transplanted a couple years ago but now it finally has blooms on it. And I added some acidifier to the soil, but I think that won't show because I want the blooms the blooms to be blue. But I think that won't show till next year. But either way, I'm very pleased and happy that it's got blooms on it. Also this another one. Down here, you can really see some color. So I think these are gonna be pink. And unless the rest of these blooms come out, I think this variety is a lace cap. Because you have, the lace caps have blooms and then they have like a lacy center. Which way should we walk? Let's walk over here to this little garden. Shade garden. We'll start right here. I've got all my coleus planted this week. I think this one's a rainbow. Not really sure. Don't take me... Um too serious with the names of them because again I'm terrible with names this larrape grass variegated looking good I'm 
blooms are done with the uh, Brennera and I'll kind of clean this up a little bit but that foliage is still nice and it'll still be in here the pink Now I've really cleaned up this hosta bed and planted some the rest of my coleus in here. Hopefully they do okay in the ground. Again, I'm sorry for the background noise. So I think this one's rainbow two coleus. So, anyway, this is my first year growing coleus, so fingers crossed that they do good. And I really like growing coleus. Just the, the leaves and the colors are gorgeous. Here's some of the wizard jade. And some transplanted um, little, again, I forget the name of these, <laughs> hostas. They stay real small, though. So these were, like, behind the tree, real close to the roots and stuff. So I dug them up and moved them out here. But who says you can't have color in a shade garden? Here's more of that wizard jade coleus that we grew this year from inside or under our grow lights. You guys might recall. Now I'm almost positive this one here is the rainbow. Another hosta garden here that could really use some cleaning up around the edges. I need to get out here and clean that um, limb coming out of there. Excuse me. Solomon Seal, still looking good. I think I mentioned this in the last video, but um, I did transplant the Amethyst Falls Wisteria. Instead of growing along the garage, um, I'm going to have it grow on this pergola and kind of hang over. The loose strife is just beginning to put its flowers on. They'll be popping shortly. Knockout roses. It's 
So I gotta show you guys the ugly, as always, right? So this area used to be, if you didn't watch um, last week's video, this used to be the area where our uh, raised beds, garden beds, used to be. And as you can see, with all these trees, it's not a good spot for our vegetable garden to be. Because there's hardly any shade over here. But, or hardly any sun over here. But this is just a experimental area for right now. Until I figure out exactly what I want to do with this area. But I did transplant and hopefully they do okay. But I transplanted some of the poppies. I think they're in a little bit of a shock right now. Hopefully they bounce back. But these were in the garden up where the fountain is. <clears throat> Stuck some more coneflower in here. But yeah, that's what this area is for right now. Just a experimental slash holding spot. The clematis, autumn clematis, sorry about my shadow, is really taken off, really having to train it on this trellis, if you will. Some of that gorgeous, um, real fluffy like uh, coneflower. This one would be red. Daylilies. That peony is done now. And I really do believe I'm going to have flowers this year on my mullein. So, that's exciting. Joe Poweed. And Butterfly Weed, the orange. You guys can see that. Again, this is my working progress area back here. The future formal garden with the boxwoods and possibly a fountain there in the center. So again, I'm showing you my ugly today. But I do plan on getting, raising all of these pavers up and really redoing I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet but I really want to make this a lot nicer because we do plan on having our Halloween party this year and this is where everybody kind of comes and sits around the fire pit so anyway This is a um, Little Devil Nine Bark. It's not in bloom anymore, but I'm thinking I will probably move this too, just so it gets more sun. But yeah, this area and all of this back here is a work in progress. It is been hard to figure out what will grow and do in full shade. Back here is a, a viburnum. And it's doing okay, but <laughs> uh, when I got the plant, I thought it was going to be a solid um, burgundy color. More like this. Or let's see. 
I mean, it was, when I got it, it was solid, dark burgundy. And, as you can see, it's green. It did have two blooms on it this year. That's about it, so... I'm wondering if this needs to be moved to in more sun, and maybe it would color up a little better. But I really wanted that to take, take hold of this corner back here. Also have more of that white rose. I also had um, geraniums and right here is some of my Chattahoochee flux. So again, a work in progress area. I work full time, a full time job and then some. We're getting ready to get busy again. So keeping up with everything has been a chore. But this is what I do, this is my hobby, so I make time for it. So guys, I think I'm going to have to break this into a two-part video. I hate to do that, but my camera will only let me film for so long. But if you made it this far, I appreciate you watching. And I hope you come back for part two of this Memorial Day garden tour.